everyone and welcome back to my channel. So I'm doing a full colour along on this picture by Mariola Budek. So I'm just showing you. It was a book but it wasn't a book. It uh, it was purchased off Etsy and it was, I can't remember how many pages, it might have been 25 to 30 pages plus there's extra PDFs that I've printed off. I'm putting this book and binding it myself. Anyway that's the page that I've chose to do and this is going to be a full hair tutorial in real time with polychromos pencils. So the way that I do the hair is more or less the same, it doesn't matter what pencil that I'm using, what sort of colour combinations that I'm using, you know, it doesn't matter what tone, it doesn't matter at all. I always end up sticking to four or five possibly six if i'm feeling adventurous pencils different colors and i'll always start off with the lightest tone just to base the whole section of her here i'm just doing i think two sections or is it just the one i can't quite remember it's either the one or two sections of the her but as i get up closer to the crown of the head i will do slightly bigger sections so yeah, I will just use this to base the hair colour and this is cream, the polychromos pencils and then my darker shade is the green gold and then I move on to brown ochre and then nougat, is that how you say it? Nougat? Nougat? <laughs> and then the darkest one that I'm using is dark sepia which looking back at the finished piece, I've got it in front of me, I probably should have used a black but it turned out really nice nonetheless and I tried to base it on one of my other Maria Labudet pictures that I did very recently but it was more gingery than blonde I had a couple of comments asking for a tutorial on that but I didn't want to use the exact same tones in the same colouring book This green gold pencil is definitely picking up on camera more on the brown side. I'd say more like an ochre, but in real life it's definitely a true gold colour. It's probably one of my most used polychromos pencils actually. So that very first layer of the cream pencil, I'm barely using any pressure. It's just enough just to get a hint of the colour there, just to get rid of the white of the paper. And every other colour after that, it's, it's normally a flicking motion, very thin lines that I'm putting down on the page. Try and keep your pencil as sharp as possible, so every time that you're doing your flicking motions, then twist the pencil so you're using the opposite side so it keeps it sharper for longer. Now with polychromos pencils, them being a harder lead of had a leaded pencil, sorry, they do stay sharper for longer versus your Prismacolor that the wax, I tend to sharpen them a lot more. Now I've heard a lot of people say that they've never broken a polychromos pencil, it must be me, I must be quite heavy handed when I'm colouring but there is a couple of times throughout this colouring that the pencil does snap, I just must push down on the paper too hard. Now in saying that, this video is a little over an hour long, so it is in real time, I didn't cut anything out, I didn't fast forward anything, and because I'm doing it on film, I don't want to keep moving the page round, I'm here you guys feel sick, so I do keep the page in the same position, but I'm having to manoeuvre my hand a little bit different than what I would usually do if I was doing it on my own, so I've got to be honest, you were using the polychromos like this, not been able to move the paper, it's like torture after an hour, uh, it gets quite painful. If you've never coloured any of Mario Labudek's artwork, I can't recommend it enough. Especially, it's got, in my opinion, it's got just the right amount of grayscale, so if you're struggling with your hair, 
it's showing you where to put your dark tones, your light tones and where to blend etc and same goes with the skin she's put just enough grey shade in there to show you what, where to put it whereas if you've just got your liner I mean sometimes even myself I do feel like I'm guessing a little bit and I know I'm doing it wrong and it doesn't turn out but I feel like with Mariola's pages they're just so simple to, to colour and not mindless, I don't want to say mindless because it's not block colouring and you're still having to do your shades and stuff but I think it's a, a, a lot more relaxing doing this than let's say if I'm doing a Hannah Lynn page or a Hannah Kyle's on it's just the line work there and I'm really having to think about right well if the face is facing left then the shadows are going to be here so if the nose is in this direction I'm going to have to put shading uh, on the cheek on this side do you know what I mean? same as like if it's a full portrait, a full body portrait of someone, full body portrait, the portrait is of the face, Deborah, like the full image of the body, then that's even harder, in my opinion, because you're, you're having to think about the shape of like, the arms, the legs, the feet, etc., wings even. So that's why I do, I really, really do love Mariella Boudet's work, and I'm probably one of her highest stalkers on it, so constantly checking for when she's releasing more colouring pages I'm hoping and wishing that she releases another book this year yeah so I think I probably should have put a little bit of black in the darkest areas like I said the end the finished piece I love it it turned out really really nice it doesn't always turn out um, as perfect as I'd like it to sometimes when I'm recording but uh, when I'm just sat here and watching somebody else's YouTube video and not even think about what I'm doing it turns out perfect but sometimes that's just the way but today I'm quite happy with how, how this turned out so I actually used that cream shade as well just to go over everything that I've already done just to make sure that I didn't miss any spots now I'm showing you a Zest It, it's a blender and also a powder blender. Now I didn't use any of these in this video, I have previously made videos dedicated to these two items but basically they are for blending. Now if I was working on the skin with the polychromos, these two items, I probably wouldn't use them together. I've never tried to use them together but I imagine with the liquid and the powder it would probably just make a messy paste on your page but separately they're brilliant absolutely brilliant with the zest it blender you only need a tiny tiny amount when i first used that blender i ended up using that much that the pigment actually sank through to the page behind it so i've learned my lesson now you know a little goes a long way so it's basically the same thing with each strand of her i'm starting off with a very very thin layer of the cream pencil going in with the green gold which on camera for some reason is showing up more of like a brownie ochre shade and then we have got brown ochre and then we've got the nugget nugget <laughs> and dark sepia sepia yeah dark sepia uh, and basically that's it I don't change the way that I do the order that's just when I'm picking my pencils out I already think in my head that's my lightest that's my second lightest etc etc till I get to the end and I have them in order on my desk and I try my best not to mix them up but I use them in in the order going through the picture that, that's if I'm doing her
I think sometimes with art, any sort of art, whether it's watercolouring, whether you're drawing, whether it's with pencils, you know, whatever me medium that you're using, you can follow so many tutorials and read so many tips and tricks and stuff online or pe what people have told you. I think once you've done what you're wanting to do, like if you wanted to work on hair or skin or a rainbow or the sky, once you've done that a couple of times and you've got used to doing it, you, you, you have your own way of doing it. So just because I'm showing you this is the way that I do it in this colour order and the way that I'm holding the pencil doesn't necessarily mean that you have to do it step by step with what I'm doing. This is this is just me showing you how I sit down and colour. This is how I do it. Let's say for instance like the tutorial boots as well that I own. I own quite a few different tutorial boots but I don't necessarily I won't sit there and follow it step by step. Sometimes I'll add my own colours or my own style. And there I am showing you my Helix sharpener. that I, I have used this uh, a couple of times on the channel. But that's probably one of the best sharpeners that I've found. But going back to that other topic. I mean, if your picture doesn't turn out like somebody else's, like you're following their tutorial, don't be disheartened. You're going to find your own style, your own way of doing things. I mean, when I first started colouring, if you look back right at the start, I mean, we're talking over a year ago now, and I wasn't colouring for that long. I was only colouring for maybe four or five, maximum six months. And the whole reason that I got into colouring was a stressful life, you know, it just happens. It just happens, and they ended up ordering. It was a Jade Summer colouring book off Amazon, and I got the Marco Raffine pencils, I think they were. And I used them and that was it. I was hooked. I was absolutely hooked. And from going to that, sitting at the couch, and sometimes I lied on the rug in the front room or on my bed, I was sat on my bed doing it, to now having, I've got my desk and I, I do YouTube videos, but I'd still now, I wouldn't look at my, uh, my finished pieces and I wouldn't judge it against somebody else's. I hope I'm, I'm, I'm trying to put the point across that just because, it, I mean yours might be a million times better. Actually I've got a good um, a reference to this actually. There was a Kirby Rosan uh, speed colouring that I did. It was in, it might have been in Mythomorphia. Oh no it weren't, it was in Colour Morphia. And it was only very recent that I did it. It wasn't the Dragon one, it was the one before that. And someone had sent me an email um, and they'd sent me the picture of the finished page. I mean, the colours were very, very similar, but the lady that sent it me, she did a better job than I can ever imagine myself doing. And I was really, really proud that someone took inspiration from me just sitting here, basically putting a camera and doing what I love, sitting here just colouring, and someone took inspiration from doing that. She clearly didn't copy me to the T, she didn't copy everything that I did, she chose similar colours but she did it in her style and it was so much different and in my opinion it was so much better it was absolutely beautiful I wish I could um, show you the picture but I haven't got permission off the lady you know to, to show it unfortunately I've not, I've not asked her before even thinking about it, it just pops into my head that that was a good a good reference to the point that I'm trying to get across Just. If you want to watch the, this video and copy everything that I do, then then great. But over time, you'll you'll learn your own style, if that makes sense. Now, I'm going to finish this, this whole picture, on camera. I'm going to do the skin, possibly with Polychromos, Luminance or Prisma, or even a mixture between all the three. I've not decided yet. The, the embellishments that you can see on the outside, I'm going to probably use either Neocolor 2s, watercolours, uh, the Paul Rubens, or, you know, there's a mixture of things that we can do, but I don't like just using pencil on one page. Purely, I'll be honest, I get bored. I get bored and I want to move on to, to the next thing. As silly as that sounds, I don't rush my pages by any means, I just, I get bored. So I like using different mediums to make it fun for myself.
so watching back on myself the the shaded bits in between so not at the top not at the bottom right in between I was I wasn't even taking my hand the pencil off the paper I was just swishing backwards and forwards up up and down to create that effect it's really really simple to do and that's why I love Mariola Boudet's work because it just makes makes my life so much easier So this is where I really started to struggle with the positioning of the paper. Again, this would be upside down, sideways, back to front if I was doing it on my own. But having to twist and turn my wrist, it was quite painful. <laughs> um, but it helps with the polychromos, again, because they're, they're a harder leaded pencil with them being the, the oil based. I don't have to sharpen them as much so I can get that area quickly done but yeah I don't recommend colouring a page like this I always wonder as well when you see watercolour artists they they will tape a, a piece of paper down to the desk which is fine it's a, it's a fabulous idea because you're not going to get the, the paper won't warp as much with the water but surely they have the same problem that I'm having right now you can see I'm starting to hold the pencil a bit weird I apologise if my ugly hand is in the way as well of some of this. I do keep checking the camera every now and again, but sometimes, you know, it's going to happen.
So I'm just gonna leave you now and I'll let you enjoy the rest of the video. I'll either put some low soothing music on or a bit of the rain sound. I'm really enjoying the rain sound. I don't know about you but I'm really enjoying watching and listening back but I'll come back towards the end. So I'll just repeat them colours again. So the lightest one is cream and then we've got green gold and then brown ochre, nugget and or nugget <laughs> and dark sepia. I don't know why I say it like that but if I'm saying to my daughter do you want to are you going to have chicken nuggets from McDonald's for your tea? I don't go chicken nuggets. So I don't know why I say that when I'm on camera.
I think the final product turned out lovely. I really enjoyed doing it, apart from my wrist hurting a little bit. If you've got any suggestions of the colours of the embellishments that I should use, because recently I've done a lot of the blondes and gingers with greens, so no greens, greens are right for this one. Uh, we could make them gold, but I think it'll clash with the, the hair a little bit. So I do hope that you enjoyed this video. And if you do do this, so follow it, or you do your sort of style on this page, or even with just these colours, I'd love to see. Either email me or send me a message on Instagram. Please do like the video and subscribe if you're new. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.